243 Winchester versus 308. You have to answer the question. Do you want to shoot lighter bullets really fast or do you want that hard hitting 30 caliber that we know and love? Let's talk about it right now. Hello everyone, this is Dave Trillo and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide Podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Today we're going to continue our theme of comparing cartridges that aren't 308 Winchester to 308 Winchester. Today we're going to take a little peek at the 243 Winchester. Now Chris, not as familiar with this one as the hallowed all-American apple pie eating baseball play in 308, but I do know that this is generally considered the smallest cartridge you can go deer hunting within, at least in 10 states, and I think over in England, although I don't know what they do over there. Yeah, no one can keep an eye on what the what the Brits are doing with their gun laws. But uh, I can tell you to keep an eye up on all of our gun laws here uh, in North America. Make sure you click on that link down below. Uh, get on our newsletter and make sure you get yourself a free coupon for twenty dollars off. But yeah, you're absolutely right, Dave. The two forty three I know here in my home state of Indiana is the smallest bullet that they will let you go deer hunting with. And uh, I know this is goes to the chagrin of a lot of our 223 lovers out there, but uh, yeah, you're going to need that 243 here in Indiana to go deer hunting. And that is something that is important. Uh, but there's a reason uh, that the 243 is so popular with deer. And that is, man, this thing can scream out of that muzzle. Yeah, it's a high velocity round, isn't it? I mean, it's not 204 Ruger, but it gets up there. Oh, yeah. It can definitely get going. And that is really, I think, the the draw for the 243 is the, you know, the flat trajectory, that high muzzle velocity, and it just penetrates deep. It's, it's got it's got that great sectional density. Oh yeah. Because it's it's so uh so light and narrow. Yeah, no, it's wild. I mean, just looking at this this round's base stats, it's it's like it's got the same muzzle velocity as a 223 rem mm-hmm. or a can at least and the bullet is just about 30 grains lighter i mean the bullet weights can range a bit but that's uh not 30 grains heavier yeah heavier. sorry I'm, sorry i've been drinking coffee all day folks <laughs> so it's it's somewhat similar to that it's just a little beefier 223 rem yeah, absolutely. It's got that thicker, you know, 0.243 as opposed to 0.224 bullet. And, uh, you know, it really gets the velocity up there. And that, you know, in turn, you know, really penetrates deep into those internal organs uh, and it f- shoots really flat. And you would be surprised, you would think with all that extra case capacity, you know, with that lightweight bullet, you'd have a lot of recoil, but you actually don't compare to the 308 because the bullet weight's so much lighter, it's literally half the recoil on average, uh, you know, between a 243 and a 308. That's great. So, I mean, for target shooting, that's 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 obviously great. And I would imagine that would speed up your follow-up shots, like if you missed on your first one. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you can actuate that bolt fast enough uh, and the deer has no idea what happened, then absolutely, you can definitely get a follow-up shot off on that a lot easier than the 308. But I think, honestly, the 243 is a great starter gun if you have, you know, perhaps a young child that you're training or someone who's very recoil sensitive. Uh, that 243 really offers that center fire power with a lot less recoil. This pretty popular varmint round, too, when you load it with a really light bullet. I've seen a lot of... Uh... A lot of a lot of rounds with about sixty grain V maxes. Those are supercharged. Like those almost hit uh, four thousand FPS out of a twenty four inch barrel. Oh yeah, I mean it's definitely up there challenging the twenty two two fifty for velocity. Now, of course, the twenty two two fifty still has it, but those V max bullets are nasty on uh, those little critters that you need to get off your property. And, you know, if maybe you want something a little bit heavier than a two, two or a 22, 250, and you want to be able to hunt deer with it, then the 243 offers you a lot of versatility in that area. You know, it lets you do the varmint hunting and the deer hunting as well. But if you're going to be hunting something bigger than a whitetail, I don't think the 243 is going to do it for you. It's interesting you mentioned the 22250 because a lot of folks do like using that for deer hunting, even though it was conceived as a varminter. Um, this feels like just a, a comfortable bump up from the 22250 if you were going for as light a rifle as you could. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, and I think that that reduced recoil really helps if you want a lightweight, you know, rather maneuverable rifle uh, that you can carry in thick brush and things like that and not get hung up or weighed down. If you have to go on a long stock, maybe you're a mule deer hunting or something like that, and you're stocking for quite a distance. Uh, the two forty three offers a lot of benefits uh, over the three hundred eight. Now, of course, the three hundred eight our personal favorite here on the ammunition comparison, uh, you know, podcast it hits pretty hard uh, and that can't be ignored. I mean, it's got quite a lot of kinetic energy that it's carrying with it. But the 243 is going to nab that much flatter a trajectory, which really, really does make aiming a lot easier. It does. And, you know, I think that's what makes it such a popular varmint round because you don't have to adjust as much for bullet drop at distance as you would with 308. Now, fascinatingly, this will bring us to the subject of ammo availability. Mm -hmm. I've seen people suggest that even the armed forces should abandon the 556 and switch over to the 243. Is there any merit to that? I mean, they can't be often something when they make that suggestion. Eh, I, I don't know if I'm on board with that one, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, the, the 5.56 five, is is a very, very potent little round, and it can get the job done. Uh, is the two forty three bigger? Yes. Uh, but you'd have to do some modifications to your, your M4 carbines and your M16s to, to do that, more than just a barrel change. You know, we talked about the 300 blackout uh, a little while ago, where that's really all you need to do is just change out the barrel. Uh, with the two forty three, uh, looking at the base diameter here you'd have to get a new bolt which is something that the you know the armed services don't really like to do they don't like changing out their magazines and their bolts because they have so flipping many of them uh and it would be really cost prohibitive if you ask me so i i don't know if i can get on board with that one uh but i mean does it offer more power than a 223 yeah probably it's a bigger bullet it's going to hit harder but i just don't know if they can justify the cost well, I'm sure the taxpayers got another trillion dollars they can summon up for that kind of project, but right. let's not give them any ideas. Right. Yeah, no, they didn't hear it from us. If they start floating that idea, it did not come from here, folks. I can promise you that. Imagine if, if the government started citing our podcasts to justify expensive public works projects. Dude, if that's the case, man, I want a cut of that action. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're going to do that, I mean, you and I need to be called up yeah. to, you know, SOCOM and we can we can give them some real suggestions. All right, but I get to be played by like Tom Hanks or Bruce Willis or something when I make the movie. Fair enough. Everybody says I look like Jack Black, so I guess that's who's going to play me. But, uh, you know, maybe I could just play myself. I'd be good with that. Jack Black and Bruce Willis are ammo guys. That's right. I like it. I love it. So the fact that the military, no military, has ever used the 243, unless, you know, tactical deer hunting operations, maybe, (laughs) that means there's no surplus ammo for it which brings us more narrowly to the subject of ammo availability. With 308, you're going to have an easy time finding rounds. 243, not a niche thing. Still, you got to look for it. Yeah, I mean, I think the 243 is going to be a lot more popular than some of the other cartridges that we talked about, like, you know, the 7mm Hot 8. If you saw our last podcast, link is going to be right up here in the card, so you can go check that out if you missed it. Uh, but, uh, you know, 243 is definitely more popular than some of those more obscure calibers, but is it as popular as the 308? Not even close. Uh, you know, you are going to be able to find 308 pretty much everywhere as long as we're not in some type of an ammo drought like we did back in the, the 2020s. May we never have to experience that again. Uh, but, you know, it is going to be a little more tricky. Now, if you hand load and you like reshaping cases, uh, the beautiful part of it is the 243 is basically just a neck down 308. So you can get that 308 brass, resize it, uh, and, you know, reshape the neck, and you should be good to go. So it's, it's like the 7 millimeter 08 in yep. that sense. You can just take your old – this 308 – brass it's pretty versatile you Mm -hmm. can neck it down to a lot of different things eh? well and that's i think what happens really when you get a really popular cartridge like the 308 or the 30 6 people just start taking it and going like okay what else can i do with it uh and they just like hand loaders they're they're a special breed and i of course include myself in that and we like to experiment we like to make things better uh and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but the 243 is an example of something that just works you had mentioned it, it's got a lot less recoil. Mm-hmm. And I read somewhere that it even beats a 3030, which is hailed as the classic low recoil woods round. Uh, super, super popular in wooded areas like New England and, mm-hmm. and uh, the Midwest. It's, it's, that, it's that much lower recoil. 
Yeah, so I mean, your 243 typically is going to be running about 11 foot pounds of recoil, which is really light, all things considered, for how much case capacity this thing has and how fast it's pushing that bullet out compared to about 22 for three, 20 foot, two foot pounds, I should say, for 308. Uh, so it is quite a bit lighter. And uh, I would say that the 243 is a in some ways better than the 3030 because the 3030 has pretty limited range where the 243 can definitely reach out and touch something at distance. Yeah, the 3030 is limited to about two, 250 yards. Is that right? With some of the modern loadings, yes, like the uh, the Horn D. Oh, the Lever Revolution. Rounds, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm, because of the bullet design. That's really what holds the 3030 back is the fact that it has to be put in those tubular magazines so that you can only use like a flat pointer around those. Uh, because if you used a pointed bullet, it could hit the primer in front of it, and that never blow works out rifle. well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and blow up your hand in the process. So, uh, you know, the design on the thirty thirty is somewhat limiting uh, for the type of rifle that it's being used in, which limits its range. Whereas the two forty three, primarily going to be in bolt action rifles, and you don't have to worry about that. So you can really use those high ballistic coefficient, very aerodynamic bullets that can really get out there. It has a very, very nice trajectory to it. And we touched on the uh, the exception to the 3030 mm-hmm. flat nose profile bullet rule that yep. Hornady is now making their lever evolution line of ammo, which has supple polymer tipped bullets to kind of skirt the magazine discharge problem. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. It's a great use of the word supple. I love that, uh, by the way. Yeah, I, I use that word a lot when I write about ammo. I, I can understand. I can understand. It's a beautiful, beautiful choice of words there. But yeah, it lets you use those you know, more uh, Spitzer style bullets, those pointed bullets in a lever action rifle without having to worry about you know blowing one off in the magazine. From what I read, it seems like the most apples to apples comparison you could make to the 243 is to the six millimeter Creedmoor, Mm -hmm. which is itself a bit of a niche cartridge. Um, Are they essentially interchangeable in terms of ballistic performance and downrange terminal ballistics? They're pretty close. I haven't researched the six millimeter Creedmoor too much. I know it's a lot newer. Of course, the 6.5 we talked about several podcasts ago, uh, very popular in the long range community. And, you know, the six millimeter is doing pretty good as well, from what I understand. Uh, From what little I've looked into it, I'd have to agree with you that they are fairly close uh, as far as ballistic performance is concerned. I thought this was interesting. Uh, you know, like Chuck Wax, he had advised the military to switch over to 243, but the LAPD actually used it. Wow, I didn't know their, that. Their, their SWAT team actually used the 243 early on. Hmm. They had a 115 grain bullet okay. that could hit basically 223 rem speeds out of a 28 inch barrel, and uh, <clears throat> you know, nothing revelatory there. Obviously, any deer round would be good for a SWAT team's purposes, but. There you go. Technically, tactically ready. There you go. I mean, if you want to follow that and if that's your thing and you think that following, you know, the Californians as far as caliber choice is concerned is a good idea, uh, <laughs> then, you know, by all means, go for it. Uh, but uh, yeah, just don't use a lead bullet. Yeah, definitely not. That, uh, you know, that's not green. You need to make sure you're using those green bullets. Could you have an aggressive semi-auto tactical type rifle with a 243 win, or are you just limited to bolt action hunting rifles? You could do it. Uh, I know that some people have done it uh, and have modified their ARs to handle a 243. Uh, for me, it's the thing with an AR, in my opinion, that's really appealing is obviously the semi-automatic nature. And with that comes the ability to go through a lot of ammo really fast. And when you don't have that cheap, you know, inexpensive five, five, six line around that you can just blow a whole mag off and you'd be like, eh, not a big deal. When it costs you, you know, over a buck around, it's not something you're looking to really just go plinking with on the weekend and, you know, go through two, 300 rounds in a sitting. That's true. We do not see very much 243 ball type ammo with just simple FMJ bullets that nearly yeah. all kind of high tech hunting, but at least with soft points. Oh yeah. And I think that's just a tribute to what the round is really made for. Uh, you know, it, it has really found its niche in the hunting community. And I think that's really why uh, it was made. It gives you that lightweight option to, you know, really reach out there and touch something with less recoil, but uh, it doesn't come, you know, with a low price tag, sadly. Now, around like this, there's always proponents and critics. Some people will say it's it's great that it can pass through a deer. Um, 
or that it can't. The 243 mm-hmm. generally gets stuck in its in a medium size quarry. Um, because you know, if it, if it comes to a halt in the animal, it's using 100% of its available energy. That's true to, to affect the wound channel. Other people say it's better when it passes right through because it, it delivers the exit wound that's gonna, you know, bleed out quicker. Do you want to weigh in on that? I because I never knew who uh who was smoking crack and who was who knew what they were talking about in terms of that argument. Well, you know, it's a really good question. And I I think there are, you know, you can look at it both ways, to be honest with you. I think what's important when you're selecting a hunting round is that you get adequate expansion. That's the most important thing, regardless of whether it goes, you know, you get a a pass through, you know, in and out, uh, or, you know, it comes to rest somewhere in the mid cavity. So long as it's reaching those vital organs to do the damage you need to take the animal down ethically, that's the most important thing. But, you know, if you have something like, let's say, you know, we, we've talked about it before, like, you know, you can take a bear down with the 22, not that we'd recommend it, but you can, uh, you know, something like that is not going to, you know, expand enough to cause those, uh, you know, those lethal wounds that will ethically harvest the animal. Uh, so, you know, in my opinion, I think I would like more. I always feel like more is better uh, and overkill is underrated uh, in my mind. So, huh. You know, I, me personally, I'm going to go for the through and through personally, uh, as long as I'm getting that expansion. Now, if I'm not getting that expansion, then that's an issue. Uh, and that's something you need to research with whatever hunting rounds you pick up. And we have quite a selection here at ammo.com that you can choose from. But do your research. Make sure you're getting a good hunting round for the type of game that you're looking for. And you shouldn't have any problems harvesting that animal. Uh, so long as it occurs to me, we got to throw in the caveat. We've had people order 243 WSSM ammo oh, yeah. from our site before, mm-hmm. and they are bummed out when they, they find a very oddly shaped cartridge where they expected a 243. Yeah, they are very different. Uh, and so make sure that you're ordering the right stuff, guys, because they are not the same. You know, that, uh, that Winchester short Magnum it is quite the stubby little round and it will not fit in your 243 chamber at all. They are very different and not the same. Yeah, we were saying the 243 WSSM, it looks pretty much exactly like a uh, one of the little liquor bottles that you can sneak into work and no one's going to notice you having in the bathroom. Dude, it really does. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend taking the, the you know, the WSSM to work. But, hey, you know, uh, a <laughs> little liquor bottle, I won't tell anybody if you don't. Take, take the little liquor bottle. It's safer. No. Yeah, your whole hand can conceal it. I mean, exactly. We all know what they're there for. The ultimate concealed carry. <laughs> just, uh, it, it's fun to just take tiny sips from from an airport liquor bottle. Oh, and pretend yeah. you're an enormous alcoholic. I mean, physically enormous. Hey, you know, everybody has got their own personal size and, you know, their own proclivities. So, you know, you do you. That's my my uh, motto, especially when it comes to ammo. Uh, but, yeah, make sure you're ordering the <laughs> right way stuff. way too diplomatic an answer. I know it is. What can I say? I'm the true diplomat here. But, no, you know, do – get what's the right ammo for you, but just make sure you're ordering the right stuff, guys. So do you understand that there is a difference between 243 Winchester and 243 WSSM? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's even more niche. You'd have to go out of your way to make that mistake, but oh, yeah. plenty of people do. It's always mm-hmm. disappointing. So I, I always remember the fellow who ordered nine millimeter full bear for his cock. Oh boy. And uh, I just felt so bad for him because I, you know, what am I going to tell him? Go go buy an extremely rare, useless shotgun? Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah so, ammunition uh, naming is always tricky. It's a 308 win. Mm-hmm. Back back to the, to the hard comparison. Yeah. I mean, it feels like we're always going to say you should have a 308 win. It's just, it's just a, a meat and potatoes rifle you could do to use to do pretty much anything. I have, I have to agree with you on that one, Dave. And, you know, I, I'll say in this one, I think the difference between the two is so extreme because you've got those super lightweight bullets with the 243 and you've got the bigger, heavier bullets with the 308. We can actually draw a distinction here because there is a, a real crossover area. So it's like if you really like varmint hunting, right? You like going after the prairie dogs, the woodchucks, coyotes even, and you want to do deer hunting, then, you know, the 243 is a great choice. 
And it's a lot more popular than some of the weird ones out there uh, that you're going to have a real hard time finding ammo for. I would say of the, you know, the 308, uh, you know, Wildcat cartridges that we've talked about recently, this is probably the most popular one on the market. But if you want to go after deer and maybe say like elk or moose, you really are going to need that 308 to do it. It would have seemed to me that 308 is going to give you a much farther effective range too. Definitely. Uh, you know, it will get out there. Uh, you know, the, the 243 is fine, uh, you know, for distance. It does have a pretty nice trajectory. Let me look here because I've got it pulled up. I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I have the, the trajectory numbers uh, measured. Uh, but yeah, I mean, your, your 243 is going to have a little less drop at 400 yards, about like 20 inches uh, compared to 29 for 308. So, you know, for most hunting shots, uh, that trajectory isn't going to make a huge difference, but the 308 is definitely going to hit harder. So am I right though, that the 308 gives you a, a much more generous effective range? I mean, oh, definitely. It feels like, I, definitely. Know you can, I know the average guy is not going to get it past a thousand yards, but it's, it's kind of cool to know you could. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely something to that. And, you know, if you want to have that ability to really reach out there and touch something, then, yeah, you're going to need that 308 to get there because you need that, uh, you know, heavier, um, what's the word, ballistic coefficient. There we go. So, yeah, if you want to reach out to a thousand yards, you're going to need that 30 caliber bullet to really push it out there. 243 is just not going to stay supersonic long enough to reach that distance. Where do you think the, the 243 kind of kind of taps out at what range? I think, you know, honestly, uh, I wouldn't be comfortable shooting it over 500. Uh, you know, with a deer, you're going to need to be closer. You need to have enough uh, kinetic energy to cleanly harvest that animal. And usually that's considered to be about 1,000 foot-pounds uh, of kinetic mm -hmm. energy. So you're not going to be able to push it out as far as you would with a 308. So there's kind of the trade-off. You get about half the recoil, but about half the effective range as well. Exactly. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, I'm not shooting at a deer at a thousand yards, but hey, you know, if you've done the practice work for it and you can handle it, then by all means go for it. I, I'm looking here on our ballistic tables, which you can see in the article. If you click in the link down at the bottom of the description, you'll have the link to our article uh, that has the ballistic tables. And it looks like for a 243, uh, looks like we're getting close to sub 1,000 foot pounds right around the 400 yard mark where the 308 is just getting started at 400 yards. Yeah, and that 1,000 foot pound <clears throat> for a whitetail uh, advisory, that, that's not like a hard set in stone rule. It's good to adhere to because you don't want to, yeah. you know, wound the thing and chase it for five hours. Exactly. But good aim can, can really shave a couple hundred pounds off that and you can still be confident. But, uh, no, I think a thousand for for whitetail and and fifteen hundred is generally advised for elks. I think it's I think it's ten foot pounds per pound of animal is also kind of thrown around too. That sounds about right. And yeah, these are just general rules of thumb that uh, a lot of hunters will use, and you'll kind of hear repeated over and over again, not just in our articles, but all over the internet on people talking about different calibers. But I don't know why you'd go there when you could come here to ammo.com. Uh, but yeah, it's not a hard and fast rule. It's not like the minute it drops below a thousand pounds, the animal just like it bounces it's off, bounce of, off it. Yeah, yeah. And it just kind of looks at you and <laughs>, laughs and runs off. No, it, it doesn't work that way, of course. Uh, but uh, it definitely helps to have that energy to make sure that you can punch through that, uh, you know, that bone and sinew that you may encounter. Uh, you know, if your shot placement isn't perfect. Spoken like a true fan of overkill right there, Chris. Hey, you know, like I said, overkill's underrated. <laughs> right. Well, gosh, I can't think of anything else to say. We could talk more about the movie where we go advise the president as uh, Jack Black and Bruce Willis. You know, I would love to do that, but I think we should probably save it for another podcast. So guys, uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below. Click the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload new content here on the ammo.com YouTube channel. And of course, make sure you get on our mailing list down there below to get your free $20 off coupon. Dave, it has been a pleasure as always. I can't wait to do the next one. Be good, Chris. Take care. You too, buddy. Talk to you soon, everyone. <laughs>